the hate army troll. It's, it's the hate, hate army. army, bro. The hate army. Shout that out guy. to hate. hate. Army. Good vibes to the Shout hate out to army. Hate. Shout out to hate. Shout out to hate. Shout out to Shout hate. Out to hate. Shout out for Shout hate. Out for hate. <laughs> I have another segment that I'd like to talk about this morning. And it has to do with statistics. Woo, 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 Okay? And the reason I'm really bringing this up is because of a particular video that we watched yesterday during my react show but in particular it very much applies to games and game sales numbers and a lot of other things when it comes to games player counts and things like that that i feel are always misleading and therefore <clears throat> um i don't know anyway in, th in this regard all right, let's just start talking from where we, where this idea came from, okay? Yesterday, I'm on my React show, DSP versus the Internet. People submit clips for me to watch and react to. Someone submitted a clip about statistics. And what the statistics were supposed to be was, what are the most unlikely things that could possibly happen to you? And some of the, uh, the starter statistics were shocking. You have a 1 in 100 chance of having a bad brain tumor. Shit, really? 1 in 100? I don't like thinking that I could be the one in a hundred. I don't think that a 1% chance is, is slim when it comes to something that could end your life. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's pretty crazy. And they were actually going on like more, like a car accident is actually less of a chance that you could do that than have a brain tumor and stuff like that. Oh my God. All right. One of the, but one of the statistics that came up that actually irked me is because it reminded me of other statistics that I hear all the time that sadly I feel misrepresent something because of context. So allow me to explain. The statistic was as follows. There's a ridiculous amount of high schoolers or people, kids in high school who play sports. Okay? And the statistic was like only an incredibly small amount of any high schooler who ever plays a sport will actually play it professionally. And I think it was like 1 in 700 will play it in the MLB or Major League Baseball. Um, one in every 4,000 will play uh, American football. One in 5,000 will play football or, or soccer. And then it was like one in 11,000 will actually play in the NBA or National Basketball Association. So, the, you know, your chances are in, are in so small, right? And I heard that statistic. And I started thinking about it. And I was like, you know, I do, this is why I don't like when statistics are used to try to push a narrative, okay? Because obviously what the narrative is in this video is that the chances of certain things are incredibly small. That's supposed to be like, what is the most unlikely thing that'll happen to you? Well, it's incredibly unlikely you'll play a sport in high school and then you'll do that for a living later, okay? That's the point of the video that, that the video was trying to make. But if you actually analyze what was just said in the video, okay? Let's, let's analyze the basketball take, okay? Out of all high schoolers who play basketball, all right, only one in 11,000 will become an NBA player, all right? Okay, well, that sounds incredibly unlikely and incredibly tiny. But what you don't realize from when they're giving that statistic, all right, is that they are using generalized numbers that aren't in context and don't actually apply to the situation. So let me give you an example. Likely what they did is they took a sample size of everyone in high school who's played basketball, right? We're not talking about people who are like trying to be in the NBA. We're talking about anyone who ever joined the basketball team. How many high schools are there, right? And how many kids join the basketball team? Each high school has a basketball team of what? 15, 20 kids, right? So multiply that times the time of high, amount, amount of high schools that they have. And then divide by the number of, of actually get into, you know, the, the NBA and you get 1 in 11,000. But that's not accurate. What's accurate, the real number that should be pertinent that they should be providing, how many high schoolers who actually try to play the sport professionally and get into the NBA actually get into the NBA? Because, for example, at any given high school, let's say you have a basketball team of 20 players. What? Maybe one of them is good enough to think that, hey, maybe I could go to college and do this. And then when they're in college, they think, hey, I was so good at this in college. 
maybe I could do the MBA for the rest of my life. This could be my job. Very rarely will you find a person who thinks that they're good enough that they'll actually aim to do that. It's not like, well, every single person who's ever played basketball aspires to be an NBA player and will do everything they can to try, right? Most people, they play it casually, and then they move on with their lives. They're not going to sit there and focus on it forever, you understand? So when they're giving these statistics out, and they're saying only 1 in 11,000, yeah, 1 in 11,000 out of everyone who plays basketball in, in high school, but what about those who actually are good and try to get to the NBA? How much you want to bet it goes from 1 in 11,000 down to like 1 in 400? Something way more likely, as long as you bust your butt, you can actually find it way more attainable. Still a gamble, but way more realistic. And what gets me about those statistics is it's purposely presented in a way out of context to make it sound a certain way. All right? Here's why I don't like that. Because here... On the Level 1 Podcast, every day, we talk about things like concurrent numbers of players on Steam or on a console. We talk about overall game sales numbers and how a game broke a record. Oh my god, it's the best-selling game on Xbox. It's the best-selling game of the season. It's the best-selling game of the year. It's the highest ever rated game. It's the highest ever this game, that game, this. And every time you hear one of those numbers, what you don't understand, all right, is that it's all within a certain realm of reference to make it sound better. Rarely will you ever be presented with a statistic in your life that's actually going to be in a context that will make factual, objective sense. Usually when you're presented with statistics, it's because someone's trying to push a narrative on you. So when you hear, this game is the best-seller game, blah, 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 this many copies sold... You always have to approach that with some skepticism. And I'll give you a, a couple cases in point here of how these numbers have been very misrepresented over the years for me. Okay? So, for example, all right, let's say a game says it broke sales records and it had a big amount of sales. All right? That's great. But what about if that game was on Game Pass? Because a lot of games are on Game Pass. All right? And you may not realize this, but Microsoft actually considers any download of a digital video game as a sale. That is incorrect from an objective standpoint. Just because you have a subscription-based service and you downloaded a game does not mean it's a sale of the game. You did not actively purchase it. You just got access to the license through your subscription-based service. That is a completely different situation than someone who opened their wallet and said, here's 60 or $70 so I can purposefully and permanently purchase the rights to your game. In fact, at any moment, you could discontinue your subscription service and you've lost the access to the game. So how is that a game sale? It doesn't even make sense. But they always count that in the numbers of, of sales for games now. And that is not accurate at all. It's completely misrepresented. And it's been overinflating sales numbers of games now for about two or three years. And a lot of people don't realize that. They just, oh, that game did so well. Actually, no. Like, very few people bought it. But because it was a day one Game Pass game, ridiculous amounts of people just downloaded it to try it probably never even went back and played it ever again, but then they tout it as a ton of sales when it really didn't sell. It's bullshit. I would think a much more important statistic there would be how many people actually played the game more than a few minutes, right? If you got a game on Game Pass, how many people actually got 30% into the game before they dropped it, right? Right? That would be more meaningful to me. How many people like a game to the point where they keep playing it versus how many people just got it on a subscription service because it was free, played it for a minute, said, fuck this, it sucks, and never ever played it again. But you will never hear that statistic, even though it's very probable you can find that out by analyzing things like achievement data and stuff like that. They'll never talk about that. Here's another situation you guys don't realize. When they tout these sales numbers for the huge AAA games... Were you aware that they're always counting sales for console bundles? Yeah. If you actually look at game sales numbers, were you aware that Wii Sports 
is actually one of the best-selling games of all time. How many people actually bought Wii Sports? Literally zero. No one ever bought Wii Sports. But the game was packed in with the Nintendo Wii for so long that everyone who bought a Wii got Wii Sports and they actually considered that as a game sale. So if you look at top games sold, Wii Sports is on there. Literally no one ever bought the fucking game. So when you hear sales numbers about a game, for example, the God of War series, right? <clears throat> now listen, don't get me wrong here. The God of War 2018 and God of War Ragnarok games are outstanding games that in their own right sold tons. But they're also counting those games as bundled in with console sales. And in particular, PS5 had an entire wave of PS5 consoles that had God of War Ragnarok included, and every one of those console sales was considered a sale for God of War Ragnarok. In reality, people were buying it because PS5 was in short supply, and they wanted a PS5, and every time PS5 went on sale, they bought them all up. So can you really count those as official game sales for God of War Ragnarok? I don't think so. Like, I don't think that actually it should say that at all. But... I just think it's ridiculous that when we hear these statistics in our daily lives, we just take them as face value truth, when in reality, most of these statistics that you're hearing are horrendous bullshit. They're never put into context of what's really going on, and therefore, you always think one thing that's not true. I always hear this sales number, that this is the next game that had the most concurrent players on Steam, and the next game that had the most concurrent players on Steam. Yeah, but what what is the situation of that exactly, right? Is there a free trial going on that everyone's jumping on the game and they fucking play it for like a day? You know what I'm saying? I hear this all the time and it's always bullshit. It's like, spin me the right data that's objective. Don't tell me what you want me to think. Tell me what's actually true. Because in reality, that's what statistics are meant to do. But what happens is statistics have been used over the years in so many manipulative ways to make people think something about something that's just not true. Okay? I keep hearing... Statistics about Oppenheimer, the movie, all right? Now, I'm not saying the movie's bad, and I'm not saying the movie's not doing well. But first I hear, okay, so it's like the top five Nolan North movies. Then it's the top four Nolan North movies. Oh, wait, well, that's domestic gross. But now it's finally hit this with the worldwide gross. Wait, now it's actually the best grossing movie that's a rated R movie, but uh, except for two others. And it's like, it's like, what are all these statistics? They don't mean anything. They really don't. It's stupid. The, the statistics are meaningless. And they hear, well, Super Mario Brothers movie was the, the like the best movie of all time, money-wise. But then you look at other statistics and say it actually didn't even break top five. Wait, what? But I thought you just said it was one. Of, it was the highest-grossing movie. Well, it's not actually. That was very uh, a, a subjective rating with certain markets and certain things. If you look big picture, this movie did better. This movie did better. Like, wait, what? Did I say Nolan North? I meant to say, uh, I didn't mean to say Nolan North. I meant to say Christopher Nolan, right? Christopher Nolan movies. I said Nolan North. Excuse me. I got my Nolans confused. But anyway, you see the point I'm making here is that these numbers and statistics are used all the time to make things sound a way that are bullshit. So you always have to be very skeptical and not just listen. Because so many people think things about games, about movies, about anything, and they just think, oh, that's truth now. All right? For, I'll give you a really good example of, of how getting a first impression about something and just believing it at face value can completely destroy its chances, all right? Do you guys remember the launch of the Xbox One console? Do you remember that? So at the launch of the Xbox One, if you remember, Don Matrick. Who remembers Don Matrick? Oh, yeah. This guy was a jackass. And when he presented the Xbox One at that particular E3, I think it was like 2013... He completely mismanaged it. He mispromoted it. He was saying things like, if you don't have a, uh, an internet connection, use the Xbox 360. This is not the console for you. No, you can't trade games with your friends. We don't care about that. Basically, really anti-consumer things, all right? Now, what ended up happening was, because there was such backlash against the design of the Xbox One, Microsoft changed an insane amount of things about the console before it released that fall to be more in line with what gamers wanted. The problem was the damage had already been done. Most gamers heard the initial reports that the Xbox One was anti-gamer. You can't trade in games. You can't borrow games. 
you can't do this, you can't do that, you need an internet connection. And when they heard all of that, they immediately just flipped the switch. Well, I don't want an Xbox One then. I'm never going to be uh, listening to this ever again. And then they didn't buy it at launch. The console massively undersold. And it took so long in the console generation for the Xbox One to actually get a solid foothold because there was this negative association with the console because of Don Matrick. So when you hear a statistic at first about a game or a movie and it sounds so overly positive, right? You tend to believe it. Did you know that Final Fantasy 16 actually has not sold very well and Square Enix is actually very disappointed with its sales results? But most people don't know that because initially they reported 3 million sales in the first week and everyone was like, wow, 3 million sales of a game is outstanding. That's absolutely amazing and I can't believe that. But they were all pre-orders. After that, the sales of the game statistically, factually, objectively tanked. Because as people actually got their hands on the game, only the first three million really were fanboys of Final Fantasy and loved it. And word of mouth was, eh, it's just an action-based RPG. It's not doing that well. A lot of people crapped on it. It's not my Final Fantasy. And therefore, the game didn't overall sell anywhere near the expectations of what Square Enix wanted for it. In fact, they were hoping it was going to blow Final Fantasy XV out of the water. And as of today, it hasn't even sold as well as Final Fantasy 15 up to this point since its release, you understand? So, yeah. Now we'll oh, well, that's only for PS5. That's only for the, you can spin it however you want. A fact is a fact. But they have been pushing this narrative that Final Fantasy 16 is a great selling game when in reality it's actually one of the worst performing Final Fantasies in the last 20 years. It actually has not done well. It tanked after that initial week and no one really is even talking about it anymore. It's done. But do you know that? You can find the data. It's out there on the internet right now for you to find. But no one knows that because all you heard was the initial misinformation statistic. You see? And that's how things work. And that's what I'm saying. You guys got to listen to the facts and not the spin. Because this spin happens all the time. That YouTube video we watched yesterday, I get it. The whole point of the video was, what is the most improbable thing? Well, if you're just a casualized person playing basketball in high school and you don't really care so much about being in the NBA, yeah, your chances of actually hitting the NBA are 1 in 11,000. Okay, but what if I'm good at basketball? I think I have a chance. I work my ass off and I actually try. What are my actual chances? That's the statistic that's really more meaningful because it's in context. But people won't put that shit in context. They'll always take it out of context or specific context to make it sound to the narrative that they want. Alright? So, there you go. That, uh, that, that's what you got to be very skeptical about. And I hope that at least me talking a little bit about it to my audience today, maybe you'll be a little bit more skeptical, a little bit more careful about what you actually believe. When you're hearing initial sales numbers, initial reaction, initial this, blah, blah, blah. There's usually a spin involved in all of it. The movies re in particular recently have been real bad. Movie, they always try to spin a movie in a way that makes it sound way better than it is or way worse than it is. You really don't know how well a movie is done until like two, three weeks after. Then the dust is settled, you get the worldwide box office growth, you get a more bigger picture. All these little numbers they throw at you at first for a movie's performance mean absolutely nothing because they're not in context yet. So there you go. Um, <clears throat> just be careful. Always be skeptical. Take everything in life with a grain of salt. Because there's always someone who's looking to try to spin it for their own personal gain or their own agenda. And you got to be careful about that. And by the way, I'm not crapping on anyone. There's entire industries based around this. I'm not shitting you. There's entire industries based around this. There's people who have literally designed entire ways of work around spinning numbers so that they can get ahead. <laughs> so when there's people who 24-7, this is my job, this is what I do. I spin shit to fool people. That's when you really got to be skeptical about what you're being told about stuff. Okay? Okay. All right. So there you have it. Typically, he helps me more than anything.